Hello and welcome to our worship today. You join me in St Mary and St Thomas of Beckett, Much Birch, up by the chancel. We've got our Paschal candle lit with our uh, poppies around it um, as we come to this Remembrance Sunday. And the theme of today obviously is that picking up on the uh, national idea of remembering all those who have given their lives in conflicts um, big and small across the, uh, the last hundred odd years or so. Uh, we're coming up to um, the uh, 100th anniversary this year of the foundation of the British Legion, Royal British Legion, as an aid um, and support organisation for those um, who've served in the military. And we'll be thinking of them as well, particularly if you've bought yourself a poppy um, over this last few weeks, um, then you'll, we know you'll be supporting their work and the work they do with uh, veterans of many ages um, as well. Our worship today then reflects those uh, themes of uh, uh, justice, peace, and um, remembering those who've died in conflict. Let's begin our worship today then. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. We praise and bless you, O God, for you, for all who have given their lives in service and for justice and peace in the world. Blessed are you, Creator God, to you be praise and glory for ever. You founded the earth in the beginning and the heavens are the work of your hands. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts, your spirit ever renew our lives, and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Our opening hymn then is Isaac Watts, O God, I help in ages past, often sung at remembrance services um, across the generations, a familiar hymn, but also one that carries um, a wonderful message for us, particularly at this time, um, when that fifth verse, time like an ever rolling stream bears all its sons away, reminding us of the uh, fleeting nature of our lives um, and, the one, and the way in which we need to put them to good use. Our opening hymn then, O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. First reading then from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. 
The first reading is taken from St. Paul's second letter to the Ephesians, verses 13 to 18. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one, and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances, so that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who are near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second hymn is also very familiar, O Worship the King, written by uh, William Grant. Um, O worship the King, all glorious above, O gratefully sing his power and his love, to the familiar tune of Hanover, written, written by William Croft. And so to our Gospel reading from St John. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The reading is taken from the 15th chapter of St John's Gospel, verses 9 to 17. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. 
I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commandments so that you may love one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The two readings that we have today from uh, Paul's letter to the Ephesians and from John's Gospel remind us that part of what we're doing when we're gathering today on Remembrance Sunday is not just about the glorification of war and of armed forces and of all those kind of wonderful um, heroics that took place and the kind of uh, uh, remembering those who who won medals for valent for the you know for, for bravery and and for valiant conduct in co in conflict or indeed remembering those whose names are on innumerable uh, on a war memorial in innumerable villages or whatever um, who have no one to remember them because obviously there is there's some of those isn't there where family lines were ended because somebody was killed in the first or second world war there are no children there are no um, uh, spouses to remember them it's much more than that remembrance it's about actually wanting to take that step beyond conflict and this is picked up in what's going on in ephesians and i, and I speak here from a very um, uh, christian point of view if you like not wanting to be one who is denigrating the sacrifice that so many made not wanting to look down on the those lives that have been spent on the battlefield in and in conflict because actually they are precious to god and they are precious to us and they deserve to be remembered but actually wanting i think to take us one step further that remembrance becomes actually a time for reconciliation remembrance of those who've given their lives should spur us into finding new ways in which we can communicate debate share our thoughts our understandings our prayers our lives without ending up having to fight and that's a real challenge, isn't it? Because we seem to have an innate ability within us human beings to want to be the aggressor. And indeed, I mean, you know, the, 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 the Old Testament um, is full of the stories of the conflicts around the people of Israel and the battles they fought and the ones they won and the ones they lost. So Jesus brings to our situation then as he often does, a challenge. And Paul picks up on this challenge. He, he is he's writing to a church which is, is struggling with division. How are we as Jewish Christians and we as pagan Christians to be united? And he lays it out that there is no longer a dividing wall between those who follow God from one way and those who follow God from another way. That wall has been taken down by the sacrifice of Jesus. He abolished the law with its commands and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity, taking the place of two, thus making peace, reconciling both groups to God in one body through the cross. 
that sense in which we as Christians then follow in those footsteps of Paul and those early Christians in trying to find ways in which reconciliation takes place. And we see that too, don't we, in John's Gospel, in the reading from St. John, where what happens is that um, Jesus is gathered with his disciples and he says, um, you know, uh, the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love if you keep my commandments, etc., etc. No one has greater love than this than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Now, what he's talking about there is that sense of taking away people's sins and restoring a right relationship with God between the people of God who become estranged from God and God himself. And Jesus is that intermediary. When it comes to our own world, with all its difficulties and troubles and, and, and problems, where do we find ourselves? That's a very interesting question as Christians, isn't it? Now, some have said, well, actually, we should have nothing to do with war. Um, and the Christian pacifist movement over the, the years has come and gone and waned and waxed as, as, uh, uh, as things have happened. And many um, uh, devout Christians said they would not fight, but they would serve in uh, the... the uh, first aid units and the, and, the, and the Red Cross units. And they saw that as their way of serving Jesus best, of rendering aid to all who needed it. Now, interesting again, isn't it, for us in the 21st century, when we in the West have endure, enjoyed so much peace, but it's been shaped by the shadow of war and it continues doesn't it to, to for us to to rec try to reconcile how how we deal with that i mean we've had you know uh malaysia and we had the falkland islands and we've had the gulf conflicts and we've had troops in afghanistan and we've had all of these things but they've all taken place far from us away from us and yet of course we've struggled haven't we with our own kind of conflict in Northern Ireland and that bombing campaign brought over to the UK and, um, and kind of part of the, um, the, the culture uh, in the 70s, 80s uh, as well. And then this whole new problem of, um, uh, of, of terrorism in the 90s to 2000s, 2010s, and of course into our own day, the 220s. There's a radical call in our Christian faith to be the ones who are the peacemakers. And that's not always easy. And it's not always simple. And often it involves difficult choices and decisions. And again, it's not, it's not a decision that everybody can reach, is it, either, about how you become a peacemaker. Do you become a peacemaker through loving your enemies, even though you're going to be exploited? Or do you become a peacemaker by quelling and dispelling your enemies? and building something new. That's, that's always been a struggle. So we continue to find ourselves in an uncomfortable position. And actually that's no bad thing, because I think we always need to be challenged, don't we? Our faith needs to challenge us to think seriously and deeply about some of these issues, about how we respond to the arms trade, how we think about the British um, uh, aerospace and, uh, and BAE systems making money out of weapons that kill people when we're called to be the people who are the reconcilers. When we're following in the footsteps of Jesus who brought together Jews and non-Jews into this new relationship with God. That I think is one of the big, the big challenges for us and our faith as we kind of navigate this re Remembrance Sunday. Always holding in our minds the sacrifice of those who went before us because they believed they were doing the right thing. 
And often it was the right thing, wasn't it? It's the right thing to battle against fascism, to battle against uh, uh, people invading countries which they've got no right to. So there is always that side of things. And yet there's always the other side, that reconciliation, that seeking understanding side. So I'm very, as you hadn't noticed, I'm very ambivalent about Remembrance Sunday. I think it is something that we, we need to do, but I haven't got all the answers. All I've got is questions. And actually, that's an uncomfortable position to be in sometimes. But it's where I am now. And I think I do wear my poppy with pride but I do carry also that sense of despair that we haven't learnt anything and that actually we must find a better way for all of the world to coexist, to be reconciled, to understand so that we might not just survive but thrive and that those generations that come after us may have a hopeful and bountiful future. Amen. Our short affirmation of faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God the Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our third hymn today for our worship is We Will Tell Each Generation, words by Michael Perry, um, a quite prolific hymn writer in his time in the late uh, 20th century, um, but he goes to a very familiar tune, Cross of Jesus. We will tell each generation all, all that you, our God, have done. <laughs> then to our prayers today. At this remembrance tide we think of perhaps family members, um, those who might have served in recent years in the armed forces and perhaps were involved in action across a number of uh, different campaigns in the past uh, few years. Um, but also perhaps there are members of our um, uh, old family that we look back and think about the time that they served um, perhaps in Europe or elsewhere in World War II. 
Um, and of course, we have a penchant, don't we, for looking back in history. So perhaps we've discovered in our family um, other people, perhaps who served in World War I as well. So as we remember them, we continue to pray also for our own world and the conflicts and troubles that strike it today. Particularly, we pray for the people of Syria and Ethiopia and Afghanistan, finding themselves caught up in civil conflict um, where we thought there was going to be peace, but there turns out to be um, conflict instead. And we pray also for ourselves that we may be instruments of God's peace. Let us pray. Let us pray for all who suffer as a result of conflict and ask that God may give us his peace. For the servicemen and women who have died in the violence of war, each one remembered by and known to God. May God give peace. God give peace. For those who love them in death as in life, offering the distress of our grief and the sadness of our loss. May God give peace. God give peace. For all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, remembering family and friends who pray for their safe return. May God give peace. God give peace. For civilian women, children and men whose lives are disfigured by war or terror, calling to mind in penitence the anger and hatreds of humanity. May God give peace. God give peace. For peacemakers and peacekeepers who, stand, who seek to keep this world secure and free. May God give peace. God give peace. For all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, political, military and religious, asking for gifts of wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace. May God give peace. God give peace. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish and those whose names we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish to harm us. As we honour the past, may we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope, now and for ever. Amen. And our collect on this remembrance service. Almighty Father, whose will is to restore all things in the beloved Son, the King of all, Govern the hearts and minds of those in authority and bring the families of the nations, divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin, to be subject to his just and gentle rule, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so we come to the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so we come to the peace. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith, heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you and your household today. So to our closing hymn, which again is a more modern one, written by Bishop Timothy Dudley Smith, um, going again to a very familiar tune, uh, Melita, for those in peril on the sea by uh, J.B. Dykes. And this one's called, O God, whose all-sustaining hand is over this and every land. 
and it's a more modern but quite reflective one on the theme of remembrance but I think the words speak to us um, uh, especially at this time O oh God whose all sustaining hand is over this and every land <laughs> So to our closing blessing. God grant to the living grace, to the departed, rest, to the church, the queen, the commonwealth and all people, unity, peace and concord, and to us and all God's servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you for being with us as we remember those who have given their lives and pray for the peace of the world. I do hope you have a good week um, ahead of you. We will be back in two weeks time, uh, which will be the 28th of November, and that will be our um, start of our Advent celebrations um, as we come into the season of Advent. So um, I look forward to, for, to uh, producing a video for that and for you to join us as we begin the season of Advent. Goodbye.